did you know that technology, uh, well, the, the tech industry is the actually the industry that is changing faster than any other industry, right? I mean, medical field, they're coming up with, you know, with new, new discoveries, lawyers, there's new laws and that sort of stuff. I get all of that and, and accounting, they maybe learn how to count things better. But IT, it's fresh, it's never boring. There's always something new to learn. And then you learn something new today and then in five years time, you're so out of date. So it sort of does encourage you to keep up to date because if you don't, then you're gonna fall behind a little bit. Uh, and today we are talking about specifically the network administrator or network engineer. Like what do they actually do? Hey, click on that subscription button, click on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Really appreciate it. First, let's talk about uh, managing IT infrastructure, right? You've got all these networking devices, you've got servers, you've got all of this tech that you need to monitor. And I know as an IT admin for lots of years, it can get frustrating, really, really challenging to just get confidence that all of your tech is running healthy, that it's up, that it's down. You need to know about all of that, right? And this is where a great tool that I came across called Pulseway will come in super, super helpful. So your servers, your networking, your end user devices, your IoT devices, your smart devices, your video conferencing equipment, essentially anything that has an IP address, you can add it right into Pulseway and make sure that it's all running well. Now here's the thing, here's the thing. I love, love, love the fact that you can open up your laptop and you can see exactly how things are going. But the thing that I love about Pulseway is that you actually get an app. You can download an app from the app store, from your Apple, from your Google, and actually get full confidence from the app directly how things are going. Hey, so you can go and try Pulseway right now. Down below, I've got a link in this video description. Go and try it out. Get a 20% discount if you wanna try it for longer. Again, down below in that link. So hey, never again be in the dark when it comes to monitoring your IT tech. Go check out Pulseway. Now, before we even get started, let's just define a little bit about uh, terms here. You've got a administrator and an engineer. Like you've got a systems administrator and a systems engineer. You've got a network administrator and a network engineer. Now we're gonna use these two terms interchangeably, but if I could give you the simplest uh, definitional differences, an administrator administers what's already there in place, right? There's some networking stuff, they just administer it. They patch it, they maintain it, they upgrade it, they make sure that the ports are open, that the ports are closed, that things are secure, all of that. The engineer does that, but they also do a little bit of the design work, right? You can sort of use the engineer together with like an architect, a network architect, but they're now gonna be designing stuff, setting up the topology, the routes, right? They're gonna think about the VLANing, how things are configured. So they're a little bit more strategic thinking, okay? That's the main differences between the two, but we're gonna sort of um, group these two together um, because um, generally both will do elements of both, okay? In IT management or in, in IT service desk management, we've got level one, level two, level three. Level ones are your service desk people, they're the people who are just logging, uh, you know, re re reviewing tickets that have been logged by staff, right? The basic stuff, ad admin uh, for Active Directory, resetting passwords, building computers. Level two is a little bit more advanced, they're maybe gonna go out and, and do more troubleshooting. They may get their hands a little bit dirty when it comes to servers and a little bit if, in networking space. Then you've got level threes, and level threes are more of your engineers, your administrators, your systems people, the people who are looking after servers, they're looking after the cloud, they're looking after storage devices, that sort of stuff. And then you've got your networking people, and, that, and that's what we're gonna be covering right here. Now, not every single company is gonna have all level one, level two, level three people, right? It's gonna be different. Some small businesses can't afford to have all three roles. So they're gonna have one person that can sort of do a little bit of everything. So what we're gonna be really talking about is somebody who is a dedicated network admin, network engineer, uh, even though they may have skills in other areas, right? Because it's not uncommon for a networking person to also have skills in servers and all of that sort of jazz. Hey, big introduction. Get on with it, Emilio. All right, let's get on with it. Networking people, what do they do? Well, they look after the network. A company has a network, right? A company that you work for has a public network, has a private network. A public network is what is out there on the interwebs, domain names, DNS, you know, all of that sort of stuff. And then you've got your internal private network that needs to be managed. 
different departments have got different maybe IP ranges, different offices have got different IP ranges, different offices in different states, in different countries have got different IP ranges, different subnets, different routes need to be connected to allow things to work between everything. All of that stuff needs to be set up and configured. So even if you go one step back, before we're even talking about the physical tech itself, somebody had to design all of this. And this is where the engineer slash architect hat comes in. You have got to design all of the VLANs. Are you gonna use VLANs? VLANs are virtual LANs. Are you gonna have different VLANs for different groups? Like maybe you wanna stick all of your servers in one specific VLAN. Maybe you wanna stick your laptops for the marketing department in this VLAN. Maybe the laptops for your sales department in a different VLAN. VLANs allow for good segregation of things and that's what VLANs are. Maybe you wanna have different subnets, you wanna have different IP ranges. What is the IP range that you're gonna be using? All right, so in a company, you may be running on a 192.168.0.x slash 24 network. Whole bunch of IP addresses that you can assign. Okay, that may be good for a small, maybe a medium sized business. But if you get to a certain size, that one doesn't work anymore. You don't wanna get under the 192 anymore because you just have, don't have enough IP addresses to be able to assign to all of the devices. So you may opt to go for a 10 network, a 10.1.1.x network, right? We've got a lot more IPs that you have available. Well, a networking engineer needs to design all of this. Are folks using physical cables, right? There's these Cat6 blue ethernet cables. Are they using Wi-Fi? This is for end user devices, like for computers, for laptops, for smartphones, for smart devices such as IoT devices, for printers. All of that stuff needs network administrators to manage properly, get them onto the network, assigning IP addresses to all of these things. Now, commonly you're gonna have DHCP servers that are assigning IP addresses to all of these things. Now DHCP servers may be managed by the networking person, they may also be managed by the systems person, it really depends on the environment. But then you've also got name resolution changes where you're translating from an IP address to a host name and this is managed in a DNS server. A networking person may be responsible for those also. You've got routers, you've got NTU devices, you've got all of this stuff that is running physical cables running into devices of some sort. Routers with ethernet points, uh, you've got fiber routers, you've got uplinks between offices, between levels in a building, you've got uplinks that need to be managed through patch panels. And then all of those cables then run into the other tech such as the servers, such as the storage devices, UPSs, and all of these other sorts of stuff. Now, the network person may be responsible for all the cabling, they may not be, this is the physical cabling, right? I'm talking about that or they may work in collaboration with a systems person to make sure that everything is cabled correctly and everything is working well, yeah? And then you've got switches, right? Where all of these devices need to be patched into a switch. So for example, in an office, you may, if you're running say networking cables, there's network points scattered around the office, all over the place. Well, behind the wall, you've got cat cables, like ethernet cables that are running up the ceiling, down on the floor, running into a comms room, into a server room of some sort. They were running into patch panels and then those patch panels, they need to be patched into switches. Those switches then are the smart devices, managed switches, and that's where you manage all of the ports, the speeds of those ports, where the ports are going. You can manage VLANs, you can do all that sort of stuff. Now switches will be very, very important for IT networking people to be managing. And then of course, all of this stuff needs to be patched needs to be maintained, needs to be secured, right? There's gonna be firmware updates that need to be updated. There's gonna be ports that need to be monitored to make sure if they're up, if they're down. So there's monitoring software, there's intrusion detection software, there's all this software security stuff, we'll talk about security in a little while, I haven't forgotten, that makes sure that your network is running safe, it's running secure, the ports are up if the ports are down, what the speed of those ports are, all of that is all managed directly by the networking person. Now I mentioned their physical cables, but then of course you've got all of the Wi-Fi space, you've got the WAPs, the wireless access points, devices that are stuck on the roofs, in different offices, in different spaces, and they all communicate wirelessly to all of this tech that needs wireless connectivity. Well ultimately they all need to be connected physically 
to a switch managed by a central switch of some sort or switches, multiple switches. The other stuff that they're gonna do potentially is what's called load balancing, managing proxies, load balancing being, well look, um, you're, running, you're running a whole bunch of uh, websites, for example, the websites can be pretty, pretty busy. There's lots of traffic, right? You got 100 views per day, then you got 1,000 views, you're growing, you've now get 10,000 views, you're now getting a million hits every single day, your servers are gonna cark it and they're gonna fall down, right? It's almost like having a DDoS attack, a, you know, like denial of service against a website because it's just too much traffic, you can't handle it. So what networking people could do is they set up load balances to balance the load, where a little packet goes here, a little request goes here, an IP address goes here, and it just sort of splits the load, make sure that the load is a little bit more streamlined across multiple devices, right? Otherwise things are gonna go down because the networking person is responsible really for the networking speed to make sure that everything is working well, to make sure that the links are working well. I'm not talking about just the, the network speed out to the internet, right? Which you will have to do, right? How fast is the internet connection out? Uh, but also, what about between offices? If you've got office in one state and an office in a different state, you've got connections between these two offices. What is the connection that you're gonna be having? How are they routing to weather, to, like together? Are you running what's called an MPLS network? Are you running an SD-WAN network? What sort of connectivity are you running? Are you running the cloud? Are you running in Azure? Are you running in AWS? Well, you've got network connections that need to be running into those cloud platforms. And then of course, when we're talking about these networking speeds is making sure that uh, when you're designing a network, that you've got multiple levels of redundancy. You've got a primary link, maybe you've got a gigabit link or a 10 gigabit link between Office A and Office B. Great, do you have one of them? What if that line goes down, you're in trouble, you're gonna get called up by the IT manager going, hey, why is the link down? CEO is saying, hey, why is the link down? So you need to make sure that you've got multiple links. You've got link one, that's this speed. And then you've got a secondary backup link or a tertiary link. Make sure that you've got multiple levels of redundancy. All part of your network architecture, your network design. And then of course, we move into security. We move into the realm where uh, I would say a long time ago, the networking person had to maintain and manage all levels of security. But nowadays, and again, it depends on the company, security has become its own thing, its own beast. Cybersecurity is huge. I'm telling you, I mean, this video is all about what the networking person does, but the cybersecurity person is super interesting. So that could be another space that you could go and explore. And look, a lot of companies are gonna expect a networking person to know a lot about security. And you know what? They should, and they're right. But sometimes the security people are a whole breed all together because they're doing more than just network security. They need to know about server security. They need to know about end user, like laptop security. They need to know about security about everything, not just the networking. But anyway, firewalls that are under your management. Firewalls allowing traffic in, denying traffic, whitelist, blacklist, what is allowed, what is not allowed, what ports are open, what IPs are open, what is denied. Like you don't wanna have uh, what's called any, any rules where anything can go in and out. Hey, everything is free, 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 party. Come in, come in, anybody come in. Hey, you're doing this in the interwebs, right? You've got the interwebs out there snooping everywhere. They're trying to get into businesses. These bad people are trying to get into companies all the time. And if you've got a firewall that is just like, hello, I'm fully open, mate, seriously, seriously, what are you doing? Don't do that, don't do that. Close your network down. Only allow things that need to be allowed opened, right? If you do need certain things to be exposed out to the internet, let's say you're running a website in a business and that website, well, it's got, it's, it needs to be exposed to the internet, right? Then what you can do is you can create what's called the DMZ, no, or DMZ, I'm from Australia, so we say Z, weird, right? And that's where you stick your servers. And then you have a little bubble network that is outside on the network, right? That's outside, it's outside of your network, I should say. So the internet can actually go and access your website and that's it, that's all they can access. But then behind the scenes, the website then talks to an internal database, an internal app server, that sort of stuff. But you keep these two worlds separate. And a lot of this stuff is all set up on your firewall. Your firewall is gonna allow only certain things and don't allow other things. 
Very, very important to make sure that your firewall is set up properly. And this is one of the big things when it comes to security. So if, you're, if you or you're gonna be working with a security person, make sure that your firewall is schmick. It's tight, only allow what you want to allow in. But of course, outside of the tech, there's all this other stuff around policies. They're gonna do backups, they're gonna do documentation, they may end up doing some form of user support if it's a network related issue, maybe but there's a lot more that they do that is more governance based, fancy word. But hey, that's all the tech stuff that the networking person do. They're super cool, super great role. If you're interested, check it out, awesome role. If you wanna go get certified, if you wanna learn a lot more and you wanna go get some certifications, which is always really recommended, the CompTIA certs are awesome, specifically around the networking space, a little bit more introductory. Then you move into the Cisco ones. Now I know at Cisco, even if you're not running Cisco at work, Go and get a CCNA, a CCMP. Really, really foundational stuff. Gives you a good enough understanding, overview of routing and, and how IP addresses are sort of formed and the structure and basics around switching and routing. Really, really cool. And then you can also get very, very specific with other sort of certifications around networking for AWS, for Azure, for Juniper, for Fortinet, for all of these other brands of tech that are out there for networking people. Hey, let us know down below. Did I miss anything? Let me know, are you a networking person? Do you wanna become a networking person? Let us know as well, that'd be great. Hey, like this video, subscribe as well, click on the button on the bell. We'll see you on the next video.